Money plays a huge role in relationships, so I'm gonna break down how each sign of the zodiac approaches the topic of money, and I'll reveal the top three most generous signs and the top three cheapest signs. Also, our weekly poll question was related to money and relationships, so I will go over those results, sharing some of your comments, and give insight into how to handle any conflicts brought up around money. So no more wasting time, we're gonna jump right into it. Let's go. Now when it comes to handling money in a relationship and being generous, not only does the approach depend on your sign, but also on whether or not you are operating from the masculine or feminine energy. So I will go over both of those perspectives. Now when it comes to Aries, the masculine energy of Aries is an assertive energy and pretty traditional and generous, especially when it comes to the beginning dating phase. They will more than likely be the ones to pick up the bill. However, if they do start to feel as time goes on that the balance is off and you are constantly taking without showing appreciation or contributing in some way, then they absolutely will not continue to be so generous. Now the feminine energy of Aries is naturally pretty giving and when it comes to relationships, they are also very independent and assertive. So they welcome the idea of a 50-50 type energy with give and take. If someone is offering to pay, then they will be very appreciative, but they won't expect it based on gender roles or tradition. But you can rest assured, just like the masculine energy of Aries, if they find that you aren't carrying your weight and balancing the relationship in some way, or if they feel like they're being taken advantage of, then they won't stick around and neither will their generosity. Now, the masculine energy of Taurus is a bit more frugal. They're more money conscious, so yeah, they're generous and they'll express their love in a big way, but more when it comes to special occasions or you needing money and them helping you out, but not just generous overall for the sake of being generous. When it comes to relationships, they're more than likely gonna approach the topic with the understanding of what their traditional roles are, but they will test the waters or check the vibe out first to get a gauge on the type of person that they're in a relationship with. Meaning they for sure may start off paying for things more than likely, but if they find out along the way that you are willing to pick up some slack and work more on a 50-50 basis, then they'll be happy to do that. The Taurus feminine energy are generous, but more when it comes to affection or doing things for you. When it comes to money, they're a bit frugal as well. More times than not, they are strongly, strongly connected to tradition and will be much more excited and feel much more cherished in a relationship where the traditional masculine energy handles the majority of the financial burden. Now, showing appreciation, showing support, and working as a team is high on their priority list too, but tradition usually ranks very close to the top. Now, Gemini masculine energy is a more of a go with the flow type, not even thinking about money as a big topic, so they don't really think of being generous as a form of showing affection. They're more generous with their time and their attention. When it comes to money, they do what makes sense to them on a situational basis, and for them, it works best if both parties are doing their part, working together without the assumption or the expectation that just because they are the masculine energy, they should have to carry more of the financial weight. This doesn't mean that they're cheap though. They have no problems spending money and spending it freely, but they do have a problem with anyone putting expectations on them one way or another. The Gemini feminine energy will pretty much approach this from the same perspective, being free with money, but not putting much emphasis on it and not having it as a go-to for emotional expression. Being totally fine with the 50-50 approach, they do appreciate generosity though. So if you seem to never have any money or you don't surprise them every once in a while with, hey, I got this, or let me pay for this, or look at what I bought you just to express some love and appreciation, then their excitement for you is going to dwindle very quickly along with their generosity. Now, cancers, both masculine and feminine, are very generous, but only when it comes to very special momentous occasions, not on the daily. They'll be rooted in tradition, so they'll naturally feel like the dynamic of a relationship is where the masculine energy expresses his love and appreciation in many ways, but one of those ways is different than the feminine energy in the way that the masculine energy supplies the majority of the financial security, while the feminine energy supplies more of the emotional strength, the emotional foundation, and support. So it's less about generosity and more about the balance of traditional roles for them. The masculine energy may change this up though throughout the duration of the relationship if they do not feel appreciated or respected, they can quickly use that as an excuse to pull back financially. Also, if they discover that they're in a relationship with someone who is completely comfortable taking on a more financial role, they will be more than happy to share the burden or to just hand it over. 
<laughs> so the masculine energy Cancerian may be grounded in tradition, but not locked into it and can adapt to other scenarios very quickly. Where the Cancerian feminine energy is pretty locked into tradition. They'll be generous on birthdays or special occasions, but generosity to them is giving devotion and giving love not really money. <laughs> They're locked into the idea that their role is showing their appreciation and their love with support and practical effort and helping you to do things and being a strong partner. They'll make sure the energy is balanced. They're just very clear on how that balance is meant to be achieved and honoring that is the type of relationship that they feel most secure in and most fulfilled in and most excited about. Now, Leo masculine energy naturally is pretty generous, having no problem footing the bill, not because of tradition, but just because money is not a big focus for them. Money for them, means fun and it means being able to purchase expensive nice things for themselves and for you. Leos are one of the biggest spenders of the zodiac so if they make a ton of money everyone in their life benefits and they won't think twice about being the person who pays more frequently so no connection to tradition or expectation there but you will get many variations depending on just how much money they do make or have. Now the feminine Leo energy isn't really latched into traditional roles either. They are very generous but they are also for sure connected to the idea of being worth someone else's generosity. So it's less about their generosity and more about them thinking, well, why wouldn't you be treating me to dinner? Or why wouldn't you be the one handling more of the financial burden? Aren't I worth it? And they're also super affectionate and supportive and they will work loyally as a team to be a power couple. They just will be much more excited about you and the situation if it reads a bit less on the 50-50 side in terms of financial responsibility and much more on the 80-20 or the 90-10 spectrum. But generous, yes, both masculine and feminine feminine energy Leos are very generous. Now the Virgo masculine energy right out the gate is going to make it very clear that no one gets a free ride. <laughs> they don't mind picking up the bill sometimes, but generous isn't really the first word that's going to come to someone's mind when they're describing them in terms of money generosity. In relationships, they're more than likely going to have the 50-50 approach. And this doesn't mean that they're not generous and loving. They can for sure be those things on occasions that call for that. But on the day-to-day -day grind, if you two are a couple, they feel like all responsibility responsibilities should be met head on with both people being just as responsible as the other. Now Virgo feminine energy won't really be at the top of the generosity list either when it comes to money. When it comes to helping out, yes. When it comes to being there for you, yes. When it comes to working as a team, yes. But when it comes to money and relationships, they will tend to be grounded in tradition more times than not. So you will get a ride or die with Virgo feminine energy, but the breadwinner or the overly financially generous, no, that sounds sexier to them when someone else is cast in that role. Now, Libra masculine energy is very generous, but also very conscious about money when it comes to dating. We know Libras are truly about things being fair, so they're the types that will be happiest with a 50-50 type situation, so they're not really going to give more than they feel like they should be or need to be giving. And because of this, if they feel like they're not in a space where they're able to come to the table with something to contribute, they will stay away from dating until they feel like their financial foundation is more secure. But you can absolutely count on them to do their part. They won't take kindly, though, to a situation where you just expect them to be more generous or more financially responsible to the relationship just because they're the masculine energy. Now, feminine energy Libra is also all about being fair and will have no problem contributing and they're naturally pretty generous. However, they will take note if you're the type of person who is counting every penny or if you're a bit too frugal and money conscious because they're cool with the 50-50 idea and although they are generous, they don't want to feel like their generosity is being called upon very frequently. The bottom line is Libra feminine energy appreciates adventure. They like going out to dinners. They like to feel special. But if you're broke, even if they are generous, that puts limitations on the possibilities menu. And Libra feminine energy does not take kindly to any limitations. Now Scorpio masculine energy is going to be someone who budgets money and does give a focus to it in terms of security. So generosity when it comes to money, that's not really a word that's going to describe them. Loving, caretaking, and making sure everything is handled, yes. But generous for the sake of just freely giving, not so much. They're not gonna be the free flowing, just openly spending type, but at least you'll know you're with someone who does take finances very seriously. Now the Scorpio feminine energy is actually very similar to the masculine energy where they respect the understanding of the role that money plays in terms of security. So that's their focus first and foremost. And yes, they can be very generous, but it's more based on an is this an occasion that calls for a grand expression of generosity. But on the general day to day, no, they're much more focused on making sure that things are handled which is a perspective that is demonstrated very accurately by this Scorpio with Capricorn Moon. Bitch, I've been grown. I pay my bills. My bills are paid. 
Now Sagittarius masculine energy is much more free flowing with money, naturally generous and sees it more as a source of fun, freedom and excitement. They love to show someone a good time and if they have it, they're thinking, why not spend it? I'll just make more. They aren't so wrapped up in the security angle so they'll be much more happy to pick up the slack the majority of the time and they won't complain about it. But if they feel underappreciated or taken advantage of, they're also smart so they won't let that go on for long. But overall, they are very generous and very happy to be that way. Sagittarius feminine energy is actually pretty similar they are very generous and free flowing with money and although they would actually prefer a relationship to be more 50 50 they will be more excited if you amp it up and show them that you're more of the 60 40 or above type they are still generous though and they're more than happy to pick up the slack when need be but again they are savvy and self-confident so if you're consistently underperforming in this area then you'll be cut before you know it now Capricorns as you know are always being related to work and money and yes there is so much more to them but this this area is a place where both the masculine and the feminine energy give a lot of focus. They both understand the role money plays in security and planning for the future, and they also both usually think of relationships in terms of long-term commitments and emotional investments. But they also love the idea of being able to show someone that not only do they care by being generous, but they also get some pleasure from showing that they have the money to be generous with. Now, because they are both usually rooted in traditional values, the masculine energy is more than happy the majority of the time to be the provider if the relationship is with someone that has long-term potential. However, they do also want to take their time to get to that understanding because they want to make sure that someone isn't with them simply because they're capable or willing to provide. So they are generous, but not blindly generous or even naturally generous. It's more contingent on the circumstances. It has to be based on the trust and the love of the relationship. Now, Capricorn feminine energy is very independent and very capable and will for sure take the role of picking up more of the financial responsibility if need be. However, they tend to go in extremes one way or the other. If they have decided traditional roles or how they want to navigate their relationship, they without a doubt will find someone to be the provider and they will hold that person to that role on a daily basis. Or there are the Capricorn feminine energy types that because they are so independent and capable, they attract situations that lead them into doing more than the person that they're with so that generosity can quickly turn into resentment. One thing is for sure though, whatever extreme they do decide to go in, responsibilities will be handled and overall they are generous but it's usually based on how they feel about someone because if they think of you fondly they are very very generous but if they don't think of you fondly then you're lucky if they divvy out a few crumbs in your direction so overall Capricorns can be generous but it does come with conditions now Aquarius masculine energy is going to be very generous and pretty free flowing with money Aquarius overall doesn't focus on money as a source of security they like Sagittarius see it as a source of freedom and the ability to do the things that they want to do and Aquarians love to share and make other people happy so they won't really bring up the issue of money and they'll think of it more in terms of whoever has it can pay now the feminine energy Aquarius is pretty much the same as long as everyone's doing their part in the relationship as a whole and as long as the love is there they are for sure good with any variation of whoever has it to give can for sure give it and they don't really think twice about it so when it comes to money Aquarius is pretty easygoing and generous now this can change if their moon or rising is cancer Taurus Virgo or Capricorn, but we're speaking generally here. Now, Pisces masculine energy is also going to be naturally pretty generous and open and not too concerned with money. If they are making it, then for sure they are okay with spending it. It's the making it part that can be a challenge for them at times. So they're for sure generous, but the question is, will they have it to give? But just know that generous, open-minded on the topic and pretty free flowing with money is pretty much how Pisces masculine energy rolls when it comes to this topic. Now, Pisces feminine energy is going to have a much more traditional perspective. If they have it, they can be generous for sure and they're perfectly willing to share with no problem, but they would for sure prefer a situation where they maybe organize the finances and decide how the funds are allocated, where they can be generous with your money as a couple, but they prefer that the person that they're with is the one responsible for bringing in the bulk of the financial abundance. Now they will do their part for sure to make certain that the energy is balanced. They will absolutely make sure you are fulfilled as long as you communicate your needs. So they would rather be generous generous with love and affection, but if money is flowing, sure, they have no problem letting it flow. So all things considered, when it comes to money and relationships, the top three most generous signs are going to be the masculine energy of number three, Aquarius, number two, 
Pisces, if they have it to give, and the number one most generous would for sure be the masculine energy of Sagittarius. And the top three cheapest signs would be number three, the feminine energy Taurus, number two, the masculine energy Cancer, and the number one cheapest sign of the zodiac goes to masculine energy Virgo. Now it is so important when evaluating how someone would approach this topic to pay attention to the blend of their chart, giving most focus to their sun and moon, but also giving some weight to their rising and Venus. And for sure, the masculine energy from these combinations will absolutely differ from the feminine energy. Now, for those of you that are new to my videos, once a week on Mondays, I do a poll regarding a certain topic and then I show and discuss the results later in the week. And this week, the question was, when it comes to romantic relationships, especially during the beginning dating phase, how do you think money should be handled? One, the masculine energy should pay the majority of the time. Two, the feminine energy should pay the majority of the time. Three, they should split things 50-50 or four, the one that makes the most money should pay the majority of the time. And the results at the time of recording this video were 35% said the masculine energy, 0% said the feminine energy, 50% said split things 50-50, and 14% said that the one that makes the most money should pay the majority of the time. So it looks like most of you went with the 50-50 option, like Jen who said, I'm the I got you this time, you can get the next time kind of gal, which seems pretty fair, but then there are also those of you that did go with the masculine and energy should pay the majority of the time. Like Ibrahim Hassan who said, since I'm coming from an Eastern background, which is also being Arabian, I would say the masculine energy should pay. So this shows that culture and upbringing could definitely play a huge role in how someone would see this topic. And then there were those of you that were very passionate about your point, like Bubbles who said, everyone pays for themselves. <laughs> on the first date, on the 100th date, in a relationship or a marriage, always. You can't afford something, you go without. Money and dating do not go together, period. So clearly, if you're dating Bubbles, it's an every man for himself type situation. In the eyes of Bubbles, if you fall, you should be able to pick yourself right back up. There was a good representation of the masculine Capricorn energy from the Saturn Sound, who has Aquarius Moon, Aquarius Venus, Capricorn Sun, and Libra Rising. And he said 50-50 until we are trusting of one another and committed because before then it seems like the masculine output is based on how much money I'm putting out rather than the essence of my character and soul. My value is not based on my pocket output. There was also a unique idea of the balance from Celeste N.D. Love who says, as a Pisces sun, Taurus moon, and Gemini rising, I'm very romantic and nurturing, but I like being taken care of. As long as you buy me food and give me booty rubs, I'll worship the ground you walk on. So for Celeste, it really is all about the simple things in life, a booty rub and a snack. So it's good to know the foundational tendencies because money is a huge part of relationships and it's something that can really make or break the connection. So the more you can have an open, honest, non-judgmental conversation about this topic, the better. This is what I know for sure. Love needs to feel balanced. Both parties need to feel appreciated, supported, and cared for. 50-50 works great, and that's how most of you voted, but 90-10, that can work too, as long as the person putting in the 90% has expressed how they want that difference to be made up. Not in a controlling way, not in a you owe me way, but in a way that expresses that there may be an area where they prefer to only do 10% and the other person says, okay, I'll put in 90% in that area. So that way there's balance and no one feels taken advantage of and you both feel respected and appreciated. Okay, so there you have it. Thank you guys so much for weighing in and sharing your thoughts. Keep your eyes open for next week's question. I think exploring these topics will help you to manifest stronger relationships by assisting you when it comes to communicating more effectively what it is that you desire and also hearing with more compassion what the other person desires and then coming to a mutual understanding and agreement on the best way to have a more fulfilling connection. You know what I always say, love. That's all and that's enough. I hope you all enjoyed the information. If you did, don't forget the baby tap. Make sure to let me know what you think in the comment section. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and hang out with me. I love you guys and I will see you in the next video.